From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a major evening of September 14th, 2022, as the latest details on inflation are released. And what are those details? The Producer Price Index, released before sunrise. We had them on Morning to LA, but tonight we have the reaction to the wholesalers' inflation. Did it come in higher? Did it come in lower than expected? And how much different was it than yesterday's implosion of news? The CPI, the Consumer Price Index, released yesterday. And the impact of that inflationary story is still rippling. We'll have everything you need to know about that inflationary print for the month of August, released yesterday, and the one released this morning as well. Plus, we'll be looking forward to tomorrow's number with the retail sales that also give us an indication about inflation. We'll be looking then to that consumer confidence being released on Friday and also the labor number released tomorrow. But one of the major stories we're working on tonight that you're here for the first time in tonight's evening's broadcast is the CPI-W. For the month of July and August have now been released. Which one went which, which one went which way and which one went the other way? And what was the seniors' relief reaction to the news last month? What is the reaction to the news tonight? And do I agree? We'll have all that plus your bath and raises, and we're just getting started because we also have 300 possible stimulus checks in every U.S. state, upwards of $300,000. With checks landing within as little as three days, tens of thousands of dollars, we got all that incredible money in tonight's recording. Go on to this video, become a member of Purple Hawk for the Power Casino VIP. Stay the big second half as we go over your stimulus, we go over your benefit raise, your recession, your inflation, and then we'll go over what's happening later this fall. As the Federal Reserve is likely to have more interest rate spikes, I'll tell you how many I'm projecting. I'll give you guidance on where this economy is going and what you should expect as well. Plus, we'll go over what part of the economy will be helped by the inflation and which part will not. It's a big night. It's a big evening. It's a big broadcast from the shores of Santa Monica, California. It's September 14th, 2022. And from the PPI to your benefit raises to your stimulus checks, all the breaking news starts right here, right now, as Evenings LA gets underway this night. Good evening, everybody. Hope you have a beautiful night on the shores of Santa Monica, California. It is a September 14, 2022, and tonight we got a lot of major news happening. Of course, your lifetime of stimulus, because of your benefit raises, because of that inflationary news yesterday, today, plus that massive stimulus, 300 possible forced stimulus checks in every U.S. state law by president and by Congress, up to $300,000. We'll go over everything you need to know on that. Plus, where this economy is being hurt by certain parts of that inflation and how much hurt could be coming. The breaking news starts right here, right now, as a big, bold, beautiful evening to LA gets underway. Thank you for joining me across the board. Hope you're having a beautiful night. We got a jam-packed show tonight, folks, because there's a lot of breaking news that came in just in the last few minutes that I did not have even on e Afternoon's LA brand new show at three o'clock, two hours earlier tonight. To this evening, we go over the latest details coming in on that CPI-W for July and August that determines how much your benefits go up. The reaction and analysis for the Seniors League that came in minutes ago, my reaction to their analysis, do I agree or disagree? Plus, you and I will interact and go over in the live chat where prices are in the supermarket and at the pump for you tonight to give us an indication of where inflation is this month as well. Let's get to the breaking news starting right now. The day started for September 14th, 2022 before sunrise with that producer price index number released. The PPI is released every month the day after the CPI. It gauges how much the wholesaler pays for the goods. And where did it come in at? Basically, exactly where we had projected to come in. Last September 11th, over the weekend, I had given you guidance on where that PPI would come in at, and it came in right on the money. 
on on September 11th, I told you that the PPI's headline number would come in at a 0.1 decrease, and that the core PPI would go come in at a 0.3 percent increase. Well, where did it come in at? Almost exactly to the money. The headline number came in at a 0.1 percent decrease, exactly as projected. And then when you look at the core PPI, it went up about 0.3%. Here are some of the numbers we're working with tonight. On a yearly basis, the wholesalers saw an increase of 8.7%, which is the lowest increase since August of 2021. However, when you look at excluding food and energy, the PPI still went up compared to the prior month of July. Economists had expected that rise across the board. Now, how about year to date? In the month of July, the PPI rose 9.8% compared to the prior July. So compared to the prior August, what was the difference? On a yearly basis, it rose 8.7. So it was less on a yearly basis compared to the month of July. There you go. What's important to understand is the reaction to the news and also the component of the news. Wholesale services were one of the big items driving up this PPI. They raised 0.4%. And demand services rose 0.4 as well. The initial reaction to the PPI today, the bond yields. The bond yields continue to move to 3.8%. This is the two-year bond. And we have never seen a two-year bond at this level, this high a level, since 2007. It started trading higher yesterday when that CPI was released for September 13th. Let's go over what this news today looks like in comparison to yesterday's blowout numbers. Yesterday, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, which is how much you pay for goods in the supermarket, the consumer came out for the month of August. The September 13th release of that August CPI showed us major beats on the top line and the component parts. The top line number was expected to decrease 0.1%, but the headline CPI did not decrease 1%, it increased 1%. The component or the core CPI, which removes energy and also removes volatile food services, was expected to rise about a 0.2%. It rose 0.6%. Major beat across the board. Where were the big elements driving this CPI of August so high, so much higher. Salaries rose dramatically, 0.2% compared to the prior month, now uh, still tracking monthly higher day after day. We also had food services growing as well. Let's look at the energy prices. Energy prices fell 5.5% for the month to date, and that was led by a 10.6% drop for gasoline, but it was offset, balanced against, the raise of food in the supermarket. The food went up nearly 1% in just one month, 0.8% compared to the prior month. Get ready for another number. The rent went up nearly 1% in just one month. Food up 0.8% in the month of August. Rent up 0.7% in the month of August. And you and I all knew this. We had all discussed this. But one of the numbers we had not discussed, a big shocker, was the medical care services showed a rise of 0.8% in just one month. Now, how about cars? New car sales did jump a dramatic amount as well, 0.1% up, 1% up, 0.8% across the board. But used car fell about 0.1%. When you look at the year-to-date numbers, where are the biggest gains, the biggest inflation being hit in this U.S. economy? Gasoline, up 26%. Airfare, up 34%. Electricity, 16%. And then items after that are 10% or lower, like food and rent and medical and apparel. When the news came out yesterday, and I featured it live on air on mornings, initially Wall Street was trading down about 200 points, and the bond yields were starting to go up. Remember the bond traders, you got to pay attention to them, because the bond traders get it right, and when bonds go up, stocks go down. When bonds go up, they mean they think the Federal Reserve is going to come in and raise those interest rate spikes. So yesterday, the bonds started to trade up, the two-year bonds, and they traded up to the highest level since 2007. Today, that trading up continued, going higher, closer to a whopping 3.8.
I mean, it's just insane. It was at 3.75 yesterday. It went as high as, I think, 3.79. We've never seen this level since 2007 of November. Insane. Yesterday, stocks were initially down 200 points earlier than the news broke. But by the end of the day, they fell 200, then 350. We're talking about the Dow. And then 900 and ended 1,100 points down. NASDAQ as well, down nearly 6%. The, today, much the, a similar narrative. Started the day up about 100 points, the Dow, but could not hold it and ended the day down slightly, about uh, less than 1%. Here is some breaking news tonight that just came in minutes ago. It's about your benefits. And this is absolutely huge. So let me go over the entire story of the benefits, and then we'll go over what the breaking news is so you understand it as a complete part. Your benefits are dependent upon this data that came in yesterday. You know that because we've been covering on this channel for a long time. Your benefits are tied to three months of numbers. July released August 10th. The August number released yesterday, September 13th. And the next number were released for the month of September, October 13th. Why? Because your benefits under, are, are going to undergo something called a lifetime stimulus. It's absolutely incredible. It is absolutely incredible. Lifetime stimulus is going to be the massive money coming to you lifetime. Because once your benefits go up, any respective year, they stay up. They never go down. And this story is getting better by the minute. During her run for presidency, Liz Warren proposed $200 a month for 12 months, a $1,200 stimulus check or $2,400 stimulus check, but it would only run for 12 months, $2,400 total, $2,400 total, 12 months of checks. Joe Biden adopted it, said much the same thing. I'll give you 12 checks totaling $2,400. And you and I had hoped for you to get that. Then last spring of 2021, not this year, but last year, 2021, I was the only U.S. broadcaster to say the U.S. economy was going to suffer inflation pervasively at 8% in December of 2021, and that it was not going to be what Wall Street and the Federal Reserve was saying. Wall Street and the Federal Reserve all last year said inflation was going to be 2 to 3%, and temporary, or as Federal Reserve governors were saying, transitory, a fancy word for temporary. I said it's not going to happen. It's going to be 8%, and they're not going to get it down. Well... Tonight's the same narrative. In nine months, the Federal Reserve has had seven interest rate spikes, and they've not gotten inflation down even one percentage point. Tonight, it's still as it started this as started this year, and that inflation has given you a great story because early this year we were deeply worried. We did not want the Federal Reserve to get inflation down before they lock in your benefits to that inflation. Let's go over what's at issue. Your benefits are tied to something called COLA cost of living adjustment. And it's determined by three months of one number. The CPI-W was a subsection of that CPI. We had seen that COLA go through the roof in the month of May, 8.6%, June, 9.1%. But it's only the July, the August, and the September numbers that determine how much your benefits go up. And if they go up in any respective year, they go up a lifetime. So tonight we have a lot more news about these numbers. We're going to lead first with the data, and then we'll go over the analysis. Remember, put data first. Don't take my analysis for, uh, as, as etched in stone. Don't take the Seniors League's analysis as etched in stone. Take the data as etched in stone. And then you and I can all discuss the analysis together. Here tonight we have some new numbers. First, tonight we know that the official announcement for the raise of your benefits will be on October 13th, 2022. This is breaking news tonight. October 13th, 2022 is when we'll get the official announcement. What is also October 13th, 2022? You can guess this one out. It's the day in which the September CPI is also released. Okay, some more breaking news tonight. Tonight, we also have the CPI-W for the month of July and the month of August being released to this channel. Remember, the CPI-W determines how much your COLA benefits go up. Let's go over this again. Your benefits are tied to something called COLA, but COLA is determined by three months of one number, the July CPI-W, the August CPI-W, and the September CPI-W determine your COLA. And that COLA is announced on October 13th. It's how much your benefits are going to go up. 
So tonight we have the CPI-W for July being announced on this channel and the CPI-W for August being announced as well. The CPI-W for the month of July was 8.7%. The CPI-W for the month of August, because of yesterday's data, was 8.9%. It's incredible. It's incredible great news. So there you go. Does your benefits go up apples to apples? Is it exactly 8.9? That means how much your benefits go up. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. There is some tinkering in there. There's a little bit of tinkering in there. Next, we have one more month of data which of course is the September data being released on October 13th. Before we go into that October 13th number, let's do some analysis right now. You and I can do it. The CPI-W being released on October 13th is the September data, the September data we're living through right now. Here's some data for you right now. The Federal Reserve will do nothing to impact this September price of goods, the September inflation you're experiencing right now. Why? Because the Federal Reserve does not meet until about another week and a half. And whatever they do, we're almost going to be three months, three, three quarters of the way done with the month of September. The month of September is going to be over. Moreover, let's say they did something the first week of September, which they haven't because this, the, the, their meeting is not the first week of September. It would not float into the whole economy. Moreover, if you forgot, the Federal Reserve did not meet in the month of August. So whatever you're experiencing tonight is going to be the inflation for the month of September, unless some world event changes the price of goods in the next few days left in this month. Let's jump in the live channel. Let's do some analysis right tonight. First, milk. Is the milk going down or is it about the same? I, for my point, and this is my perspective, I want you to say the same. I want you to give your perspective and say where you're from. Milk, Los Angeles. I see milk in Los Angeles coming a little bit down. Right in the live chat, milk where you live, down or up or, or, or the same. Eggs, Los Angeles. I see eggs going up. I see eggs going up this month. And we're talking only about this month. I'm talking about the month of September compared to the month of August. Right in the live chat, Eggs and where you live, the same down or up. Okay. The next one is an easy one. This is a gimme. The wages. No one's wages are going down, so that's a gimme. Are the wages the same or are they going up in the month of September? This is an easy one. Why? Because we have data for this one. We have the non-farm payroll number released about three weeks ago. It showed that wages were going up 0.3% the prior month. And the number released uh, for the CPI yesterday showed the real wages were going up month to month. So there's no indication that wages are going down and there's no indication that wages are flat. So that's absolutely not happening. So of course, the answer for this one, wages are going up in the month of September. Next, the rent. This is where it gets really interesting. We talked a lot about this on this channel. The rent is 30% of the CPI. The rent is 30% of the CPI, but we don't have a lot of data on the rent. Well, we do tonight because of that CPI release yesterday. The rent went up nearly 1% in one month, in four weeks. The rent in the month of August went up 0.7%. That's nearly one percentage point. That's like the food that went up 0.8% in the month of August. So do you see the rent dropping? Of course not. The rent is not dropping the month of September. Occupancy levels are really high in the United States for rent. So rent is definitely not going down. It's either the same or going higher. So with that, is there anything left in there that's potentially going down? Yes, of course, gasoline may be going down a little bit, but that's a big topic of discussion, debate. We'll go over that later in this recording. Uh, in Los Angeles, my perspective is gasoline has not gone down at all. It has not gone down one iota this month. So jump in the live chat. Gasoline gone up the same or gone higher. I don't see it gone higher, but I have not seen it gone down one iota. I see it almost exactly the same. All right, with that, if you believe all these component parts show, with the exception of gasoline, that the items are going up month to month, that in this month of September, you show from your eyes, your ears, your feet, your walk in the stores, that the items are still going up this month of September, with the exception of the gasoline, then you are to believe that the component core CPI, when it's released on October 13th, is likely to be about the same or higher. Absolutely. Now, remember, medical 
medical care costs was the big shocker. It showed a 0.8% rise this month of August, the last month of August. So we have enough items that offset any fall of the gasoline prices. Okay, let's now go into the analysis of the raise of your benefits. October 13th is when the official COLA, the official number is released. COLA will tell you how much your benefits are going up next year. Here is the analysis. Pause, breathe. This is analysis. It's not data. You can disagree with the analysis. You can disagree with me. You can disagree with this group's analysis. It's called the Seniors League. And let me tell you what their analysis is. Jump in the live chat and get ready to say agree or disagree. I'll have my commentary just shortly as well. The CPI-W determines how much your benefits go up. Remember, in the month of July, the CPI was 8.7%. In the month of August, released yesterday, it went higher, 8.9%. So you would assume the Seniors League today is saying that they think your benefits are going up even more than they said they were going to go up last month. No, they're saying the reverse. The Seniors League in July said your benefits were going to go up 10% based upon the July CPI, dash W. Yesterday's CPI, dash W, for August went higher. But tonight, the Seniors League is saying, based upon a higher CPI-W for August, they're now adjusting your benefits lower than what they had in July. They said July 10% raise of your benefits. Tonight, they're saying 8.7%. Agree or disagree? Jump on the live chat. Agree or disagree? Here's my reaction. Obviously, I disagree. I mean, I just, I don't, first of all, I have no idea why they're doing it. It doesn't make any sense. There's no, it's just a number that's out there. I don't see the the work through. I don't see the analysis. I don't see the calculation. I don't see, uh, when you look at a number going up and the uh, when you look at the CPI-W in July is here and then August went higher and the Sears League saying, uh, okay, now we're adjusting your benefits lower based upon a higher number. I, I don't see the analysis uh, and they don't say the analysis. So I can't explain it out to you. Do I agree? I absolutely do not agree. I do not agree whatsoever. Here is what it issue. My projection is your benefits are going to likely go up 11 to 12 percent, but I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. I could be absolutely totally wrong. They could be right. You could be right. It could be eight. It could be nine. It could be 10. It could be 11. It could be 12 percent. We could all be right or wrong. Now, here is where it gets hideously complicated. You've never heard this before on this channel. To tonight. I told you there's a lot of breaking news tonight. Your, if you are on Medicare Part B, if you're on Medicare Part B, only this is only a group of people I'm referring to tonight, then you could see a lot, a lot more benefits than even the Seniors League or I are discussing. Why? Okay, I'm going to slow this down because I know this is going to be complicated. Medicare Part B last year got, uh, excuse me, la let me back up. Last year, everyone's COLA was 5.9%. The COLA last year was 5.9% for everyone. But last year, if you were on Medicare Part B, a lot of your 5.9% COLA raise, if you're on benefits, was eaten up, consumed by Medicare Part B benefits, which cost 14.5% more. Say that again. Last year, your raise was 5.9% for COLA. But at the same time, your Medicare Part B costs went up faster, 14.5%. This year, it's 100% not happening. Why? Because the raise of 145 last year was all because of one pharmaceutical medication in Medicare Part B. That pharmaceutical medication has been removed by Congress, by law. So that, I know this is complicated. I'm trying my best. Your Medicare, those individuals who are watching tonight's recording trying to figure out how much your benefits are going to go up, and we're talking about 11% or 12% or 8% or 9%, you may in the back of your head say, but last year, I'm on Medicare Part B, and it got consumed a lot. Tonight, you can remove that from the possibilities because... Your Medicare Part B was so expensively higher last year, 14.5% higher because of one medication. 
that medication is now removed from the equation. I'm not even going to go over what medication is because it's irrelevant. It's been removed. So there you go. That's a lot of data. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of data. I'm telling you how much your benefits are going to go up. I'm, I'm comparing it from Medicare Part B, how much your benefits. Yeah, that's a lot of data. <laughs> and here's Joe Biden. I, I, I have to sort of joke here somewhere because that's just an insane amount of data. Here's Joe Biden with his data. Uh, he, was asked, he was asked after uh, the inflation came out yesterday for the month of August, for the month of August, for four weeks. He was asked, was he worried about the August CPI? No, because it only went up uh, one tenth of a percentage point. <laughs> That's how you sort of, you know, avoid the question. Are you worried about inflation in the United States, United States economy? No, because in the last four weeks, it only went up 0.1 tenth of a percentage point. Yeah, <laughs> in only four weeks. But how about the last nine months, Joe? <laughs> In the last nine months, Mr. President, the gasoline went up 26%. Well, that was not your question. Uh, the airline fares went up 33% of the last year. Well, that was not your question. I'm, we're making progress in the last four weeks. It only went up 0.1% in the last four weeks. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you lead with data on this channel. The big news is that there's massive stimulus. Massive stimulus for stimulus checks in every U.S. state. It's federal stimulus passed by the President of the United States. The first three checks, A, B, and C. The next checks that bring us to 14 categories of 100 to 300 checks, upwards of $300,000, all law now. It's federal stimulus, it's in every US state, and it's incredible, how do you get it? Let's go over the details. First, you go into this video, subscribe to LA1, or LA2, or LA3, or all of them. Number two, you go into this video, become a member. Join this channel, Purple Hawk, Purple Power Casino VIP. Then get that incredible newsletter for members of this and the other two LA channels, LA1, LA2, and LA3, and go into that newsletter and apply for those individual checks. 300 possible checks, over 14 categories. Let's look at those incredible checks right now. Don't forget, it starts with you going to this channel and becoming a member, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Cow, Sino, VIP. Those incredible checks just continue to grow left and right. The first three checks were passed by Congress, by, by were passed by the President of the United States by executive action in the month of March. Huge. About $100,000. We call those checks on this channel, checks A, B, and C. And you qualify. Again, it's federal stimulus. It's from the federal government. It's not from your states. Single individual, $75,000 less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, go get it. If you're on benefits, SSI, go get it. SSDI, go get it. Veterans benefits, go get it. There is no other way to get the stimulus than apply for it. You have to do something to get it. You have to go get it across the board. The next seven categories of stimulus was passed by Congress four weeks ago. Yes, law, yes, tens of thousands of dollars. Seven categories, E through K, in the membership newsletter, together. Then, over the last few weeks, I have found you more checks, L and M, N and O, P and Q. Those incredible checks continue to grow, now bringing us to 14 categories. Yes, you heard me right. 14 categories of nearly 300 checks, federal checks, not state checks, for you. How do you get them? You go on this video, become a member, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP. You get that incredible newsletter, and you go down and apply for each of these checks. A and B and C are together, then E to K are together, then L through Q. Get these incredible sums of money, become part of the Purple Power, and the big second half, we're going to go over all these sums of money and what you need to know. Plus, we'll look forward to what's going on tomorrow and also on Friday, as the week is certainly not over with the breaking news at issue. We'll jump over to the Federal Reserve and what is happening with them and what Wall Street is betting on and betting against. Plus, we'll be looking back at the big money at issue, going through each of those incredible checks, and we'll be looking at where the economy is heading and who in this economy is going to get hurt with this sky-rising inflation. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, I'll see you back in 60 seconds as the evening continues from the shores of Santa Monica, California for September 14th, 2022. The breaking news, far from over, I'll see you back in 60 seconds. As all the details continue on a big evenings of evenings I light.
If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the excitement continues right now on a big September 14th, 2022 from the shores of Santa Monica, California. As we go over those incredible four stimulus checks in every U.S. state, you qualify. Go under this video, become a member, and get those incredible checks. We're going to go over each of them right now. They are huge, and you deserve these big sums of money. With a recession underway, with inflation not going away, you need to get these big sums of money. Let's go over each of them right now. The first three checks are checks A, B, and C, they were passed by the President of the United States by executive action in the month of March. Views have been getting them ever since. They're huge sums of money. How do you get them? Step one, go into this video, subscribe. Step two, go into this video, hit that join the button channel. Become a member, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Casino VIP, to either LA1, LA2, or LA3's broadcasting three channels. Then, Get that membership newsletter delivered to you Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alert system. Go down to where it says check A, click the link and go in and get it. Go down to the where it says check B, click the link and go get it. Go down to where it says check C and it tells you where to call and where to get it and go get those big sums of money. These incredible checks are huge and we have so many success stories across the board. In the case of check A, we have Spelly, who got it just a few days ago. Check B, we have the wonderful Frank Mancuso out of Florida. Look how much money he got for that incredible check B. 18 months of mortgage, 18 months of utilities, 18 months of high-speed internet. We have another viewer out of Florida who got 80 to 100 checks of check B. Just huge. And then when you go to check C, it's been on this channel for a long time. That incredible check C has been on this channel for a long time. And the success stories are just huge because this channel has gotten people $50 million. You want to see some of the success stories for check C? For rent, utilities, mortgage, assistance, and more. Here you go. $30,000 for rent. $15,000 for utility. Ling Glenn, just a few days ago, got 12 months of utilities. We had two viewers get 14 months of rent just a few days ago as well. We have the the SNAP, Mark's brother in law got 15000 Then we have the combinations of checks. Nisu's nice, at 23000 she went to 50000 Mark was at 32000 he went to 166000 after before he after he went to fifty thousand and here's a little range was at one hundred five but she went to one fifty five, it's a common occurrence that people are getting monster sums of chan of money from this channel, over a hundred thousand, dragon getting over one hundred forty thousand dollars you can as well, those are checks A, B and C. Then you want to go down in the membership newsletter where it says check E through K, those are the seven checks passed by Congress no less than about four weeks ago. Go get those huge checks as well. And after that, go down the newsletter. It has L and M, N and O, P and Q. Get those great checks. Additionally, how much are these checks? What are the delivery times? How fast? We're looking at checks as low as three-day delivery times. Incredible. Tens of thousands of dollars in just a few days, in less than three days. 
some of the checks are astronomical. What is the average payout of the checks? What's the high? What's the low? The highest check is about $100,000. The lowest check is about eight dollars to $10,000. The fastest turnaround time is about less than three days. It's just incredible. This is federal stimulus. So go get these big sums of money and keep on getting the money. One of the great benefits of being a member is the membership newsletter, which is where you go in and apply for A, B, apply for C, D, apply for E through Q, and continue all across the board. One of the other great benefits of the membership newsletter is the worksheets. The worksheets are in the newsletter around the third line. Inflation. Tonight, we know that the producer price index released today showed the core PPI went higher compared to the prior month and the headline PPI basically flat. We also know that the labor number is being released tomorrow. The projection is 242, 242,000 up from 225. We'll see it's correct. And then the Federal Reserve. This is a big E. The Federal Reserve is page one of the incredible worksheets. The Federal Reserve, in my opinion, is going to do interest rate spikes for the whole rest of this year. I'll have more about that in a second. The next page of the worksheets is a table for you to keep track of all the incredible stimulus you're going to apply for as a member. Then a page after that is a page to keep track of your potential raises of your benefits. You can run all the calculations. And finally, the gasoline, a table on that as well. The gasoline, as I teased earlier in this video, is a real big topic of discussion and a topic of battleground because the price of gasoline that is being reported by the AAA national average, no one in this report channel is seen on an average basis across the country. Whereas the international price of Brent crude is falling day after day. So it's re falling and then rising and basically flat day after day. It's fascinating left and right. Ultimately, here is the biggest issue at hand, the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is going to battle that inflation and is going to battle it by raising those interest rates. And yet, Wall Street has not grasped that reality. I was the first to tell you that inflation was going to be 8% last December, and it was. And I was the first to tell you that inflation is not going to go down, and has not. It's been now nine months, and in seven means of the Federal Reserve, they have not gotten inflation down even one percentage point. They need to get it from 8.6%, 8.4% to 2%. It's going to take a while. They meet once a month at FOMC meetings, and they really only have two options at the moment. 75 basis point increase for interest rate spikes, or 50 basis point, which is a little weaker. My projection... Interest rate spike of 75 basis point in September, October, November, and December, and then continue with similar types of spikes all throughout the middle half of next year to around June of next year. Wall Street. Wall Street is not projecting any more spikes after September. Running a narrative that this is all done in September, running a narrative that the gasoline has fallen, running a narrative that the economy has fallen apart, and the Federal Reserve is going to put the brakes on this, and running a narrative that you should buy, buy, buy. Well, I'm so proud of you, because we've discussed this a lot on this channel, and you have gotten it right once again. We had discussed the following. One, that the Federal Reserve has made it very clear. They got to get that inflation to 2%, and it ain't going to fall dramatically in one month. And that's going to take several months. Number two, Wall Street is betting against this. And every time they bet against this, they lose. They lose when there's an indication that they are incorrect. And that indication was yesterday. The September 13th CPI that was released showed inflation was very hot, very high. That means the Federal Reserve is going to have to come in and spike those interest rates higher. Wall Street was not betting on that, even though they were told it was going to happen. It happened four weeks earlier when Wall Street said, buy, 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 buy some stocks, buy some real estate. And Jay Powell spoke at Jackson Hole, said, are you not hearing me, Wall Street? I got a lot of interest of spikes done, and I'm not stopping in October. He specifically addressed the rumors or the narrative or the false promises. And here's the analysis tonight. The analysis is that Wall Street seems to still not grasp it. We have the following comment that came in before the crash of the market yesterday and the comment that came after the crash of the market yesterday. First, we have the comment that came out on September 12th, the day before the market crashed 1,100 points, from Seema Shah that said stocks are getting back to reality. Based upon Shaw saying 
that Wall Street's now understanding there'll be an interest rate spike in September. Uh, they got a lot more to understand than that because we got interest rate spikes after September. Then the day that the markets crashed down 1,100 points on September 13th yesterday, we had Michael Lowengarth at, at Morgan Stanley saying that Wall Street was being a bit premature in its wishful expectations that the Federal Reserve is going to put brakes and stop doing it. Bit premature? Uh, no, very premature. Because I believe that the Federal Reserve is not going to stop these interest rate spikes until middle next year. I mean, how can you think they would do it sooner? They got to get to 2% inflation. They are very far away from 2% inflation. And what they have done so far has not worked. And that when you look at these component parts like gasoline, and uh, when you look at these component parts like, like salaries, like rent, there's no indication to bring them down lower. And with all that, Wall Street is still not grasping this reality of interest rate spikes thereafter. This is a big problem for you. Why? Not because you don't own stocks, or you do, do own stocks, because it impacts major swaths of the U.S. economy. Here's what you need to do tonight. You need to think back and wonder in your mind who around you that you interact with and may be financially dependent upon is a person who has a lot of debt. Do you work for a small business owner, for example, that is the only other employee besides you in the small business? And that owner of that small business bought the furniture on debt, is buying the goods that are being shipped to the store on debt. What about your son or daughter who has a car loan that is based upon debt? What about your neighbor who bought that house with a very big mortgage rate of 80% uh, mortgage and only 20% down, and the mortgage is variable. Yeah, you need to think about who's around you that has that massive debt because these are the people who are going to get really hit badly. And yes, while the raise of your benefits is huge and great news based upon that inflation, that inflation is going to hurt other people really badly. And let's go over who and how that happens. Number one, real estate. Real estate, if you think it's bad right now, it's going to be really worst. Why? Mortgage rates are going to kill the real estate industry if they haven't already. The mortgage rates have surged from about 3% to a 6% fixed in the last year. That's with seven interest rate spikes from the Federal Reserve through July. Imagine with the Federal Reserve potentially doing interest rate spikes September to December and continuing thereafter, you're likely to see a 7% mortgage rate. No one can afford a mortgage rate at 6%. They're not going to be able to afford it at 7%. So, if you're on any side of that equation, prepare accordingly right tonight. If you're a home seller, get the home sold. The average home seller has had to drop the price of their home. 20% of them have had to drop the price of their home. You can see that number jump to 40% because people are not selling their homes. On the buyer side, get that home bought if you have to buy a home before the mortgage rates go higher. And please lock in a fixed rate mortgage. Do not get a variable rate mortgage. Number two... Please understand that the numbers for the housing are not getting better. There's not a single number in housing that is improving. The average home price sold in the United States is now down 14% compared to 2019. Down, excuse me, 2021. Down 40% compared to 2021. And the average time that the home takes to sell is growing by five days in just the last two weeks. It could grow as well across the board. The housing market will get worse. As the mortgage rates grow, the homes don't sell, the inventory increases, that's what's going to happen next. Let's go over to any variable debt. Car loans. You know, I look at this data that came in yesterday for that CPI. One of the data points is going to change. Which one isn't? You know which I'm about to say. The, the new car sales. 10.1% the price of new cars went up in the last year. Uh, the new car sales prices may be going up. But the number of cars sold will not continue to go up. Why? Because most people buy cars on debt. They buy, buy cars on car notes, on, 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 on car loans that are variable. And you're not going to see people able to afford these car loans any longer if it continues this rate. Here's another new analysis you want to hear tonight, which is very important. The Federal Reserve is trying to get inflation down. But some of these component parts, it has nothing to do with to get them down. The rent, if the landlords can get that rent from you, they're going to get that rent from you and they're not going to lose, reduce the price of rent or stop raising the price of rent based upon the Federal Reserve. 
next. The salaries. If the employee believes they can get a salary rate, they're not going to take a lower salary rate because upon something the Federal Reserve did. So salaries are not likely to go down at all because based upon what the Federal Reserve is doing, nor is rent likely to go down based upon what the Federal Reserve is doing, and that's over 30% of inflation. Yeah, so you see how things are going here? Federal Reserve could ultimately impact milk and eggs and could ultimately impact energy prices, but rent and salaries, I don't see it happening. And that is why this could potentially continue into next year. Let me jump over the comments from Joe Biden, the continuation of his comments that came in late after the close of the market yesterday, because they're important for you to understand. It's also important for you to get yourself acclimated to correct data and away from incorrect data. The comments from the President of the United States were in response to a series of questions yesterday that started with this question. The President was asked what was his reaction to the new Consumer Price Index numbers released for the month of August yesterday. This question was to him yesterday. He said the stock market doesn't necessarily affect the state of the economy, as you well know. The CPI is not the stock market, folks. <laughs> the CPI is not the stock market. The Consumer Price Index number is not the stock market. It is how much the milk is in Delaware. It is how much the eggs are in Wisconsin. It is how much the rent is in Florida. It is how much the gasoline is in Seattle. That is what the consumer price index number is. And so for him to say that super consumer price index number uh, is, refl is not reflective of the state of the economy, it's just not the case. The reason why the stock market crashed yesterday is because of the consumer price index number, which does reflect Americans and their spending habits and what they're having to endure to spend and to survive. The president went on to say, and the economy is still strong. Unemployment is low. Not as low as it should be. The lowest unemployment, the lowest unemployment rate was posted two months ago. We've seen since 1969 is actually now up. Jobs are up. No, that's actually wrong data. Job creation fell dramatically in the month of August. That was a non-farm payroll number released just two weeks ago on this channel. Remember that number. The month of July was about 500,000 jobs created. In the month of August, it was about 300,000. It was dramatically down. There are jobs being created, but the number of jobs being created, private sector, month to month, is down dramatically. Manufacturing is good. He's right with that. And he says, I think we're going to be fine. I think you're going to be fine in a recession. It's nice to be optimistic. We all love optimism. I mean, that's sort of the job of the President of the United States to keep the consumer confidence and keep our sentiments and good wishes. I love that. But not when the data is wrong. <laughs> you know, it's, it's comforting for persons to say, you know, we're in a recession, but we'll get through it together. I think we'll be okay. It's not okay to say we're not in a recession. You're going to be fine. It's not okay to say something like we're grading jobs are way up and you're going to be fine. No, there's layoffs, there's hiring freezes, there's 234,000 new jobless claims a week. Uh, and moreover, we all know this, because I say it every day on this channel, labor falls apart at the end of a recession, not at the start of a recession. To say that you're fine now does not mean you're going to be fine in two months from now, because labor falls apart later in a recession. Housing falls apart at the start of a recession. It's that type of data and analysis I need you to laser focus in on, and you've done such a great job. Look and focus and keep your eyes and ears and your feet moving in those stores. Look at the milk and eggs when you go out to the supermarket. Look at the price of gasoline today and versus last week. Look at the rent or hear what your neighbors are paying. Did the rent go down or the rent go up? Look at how many people are at the checkout stand at that Walmart or Target, same number of employees than last week, because ultimately, this is very important. Why? This is September inflation. If you can see, if you can hear, if you can experience the September inflation today around you, and you can jump in the live chat of the shows on this channel and LA2 and LA3 and post your comments that I see this in the New England states. I see this in the Southeast. I see this in the Southwest. And someone else says, I see the same thing as you see then you start to get the data of this month, September, before Wall Street does. And with that, as the Purple Power community, we get guidance 
on where this CPI-W for September is likely to come in when announced on October 13th. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, there's so much to know. And ultimately, the best way to be part of this equation is to be data dependent, not analysis dependent. Even today, even today, I had some quotes that I did not run. I had some quotes from people that reacted to the CPI just yesterday. And you know exactly what the quotes were. Well, I think we got over that. <laughs> Yeah, this is the same type of quotes. The market's open today. The stock market opened today up about 100 points, you know, 150, and it down. They tried to get a reprise. If you did not notice it last night, maybe you did not notice it, after the close of the crash, after the crash yesterday, 1,100 points down, the stocks were trading up really high after hours, September 13th, after the crash. They never got to those high levels during normal trading hours today. And by the end of the day, they never were anywhere near those trading levels. Everyone that told you to buy, buy, buy in May, June, July, and August is now eating crow. Because guess what? Everything is back down to those May levels and will get worse across the board. As the inflationary pressures continue and the Federal Reserve raises those rates, here's what you need to know. Remember, Fed raises rates. The bond yields will go up. The bond traders will trade the bonds up. When bonds go up, stocks go down. Let's do that again. Fed raises rates, bonds go up, stocks go down. It's very simple. And yet, they're trying to tell you to buy. <laughs> Absolutely not. You got to be on the right side of the equation at the right time. Ultimately, your interaction in the live chat is very important, and I appreciate you across the board. Jump on on LA1, which has Stimulus Live airing today all throughout the day as well. And you can interact with other people and share your comments on what's happening with the U.S. economy. Meantime, on LA3, we had Crypto Alive airing today. Oh, it was a lot of fun. I jump all over that show. It shows you which of the best cryptocurrencies to take a look at, even in the state of this economy. Remember, what they tried to say to you was that there was a resistance level for Tesla, a resistance level for Bitcoin, a resistance level for Ethereum. We're all below those resistance levels. We crash. And that is exactly what I recorded for you the day before the stock market crash. Credit Suisse on September 12th, a day before the 1100 point crash of the markets, which again is the biggest crash since 2020, said we will be eventually moving much lower than the year-to-date lows and beyond. That was their analysis before the stock market crash. They were not alone. Fitch Ratings said that further monetary tightening will continue from the Federal Reserve. And that will continue downward revisions for expectations for 2022, meaning more companies will downward guide. Wall Street, is it indicative of the U.S. economy? It absolutely is indicative of the U.S. economy. Wall Street is absolutely indicative of the U.S. economy because as businesses on Wall Street cannot employ, they lay off. As employees are laid off, they cannot afford their expenses at home. If they cannot afford their expenses at home, they do not buy at the local market on Main Street. And that is America. And that's how the economy works. Join me nightly on this channel with a brand new show of Afternoons LA at 3 o'clock. An evening's brand new show at 5 o'clock. LA Light Live, airing all throughout the day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Thank you for joining into that show as well. Don't forget to become a member. Remember, 14 categories of 100 to 300 checks, upwards of $300,000. Tens of thousands of dollars of stimulus checks for you, with quick delivery times as slow as three days. Massive stimulus, all from the federal government, not from your states. You want to get these big sums of money. Go under this video, become a member. Becoming a member to LA 1, 2, or 3 delivers you the membership newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alerts. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, God bless. Hope the weather is good where you are. It's cool down here from the shores of Santa Monica, California. The week is just getting underway. The week is far from over. I'll see you throughout the night, and I'll see you throughout the week. Don't forget to get that great stimulus, and don't forget to be informed, stay informed, and stay focused. And stay with Ally for more.